Nerf Miner, Nerf Mega Knight, Nerf Hog Rider. For years, Clash Royale players have been calling for nerfs for cards. That's nothing new. People always echo the phrase, nerf followed by a card they don't like. Sometimes it rises to the point of becoming a widespread meme in the community, though. In some cases, it's sarcastic. But in other cases, it's because Supercell decides to not nerf a card despite players clamoring for a nerf for months or even years. The Royal Giants was the earliest example where players called for a nerf to it so much that it became a widespread meme. But why did Supercell refuse to nerf this card for so long? How did Supercell deal with this card over the years? Why was this card so frustrating to players? In today's video, I'm going to be answering all those questions as we go through the entire 7 year history of the Royal Giant. The Royal Giant was released into Clash Royale with the March update on February 29th, 2016. The Royal Giant was special because he was a ranged win condition true. Although there have been ranged units and ranged buildings that you could consider win conditions, the Royal Giant was unique enough to offer another interesting way to play. However, players wouldn't really be able to have that experience because the Royal Giant was incredibly weak upon its launch. I'll argue this state was easily the weakest state the card has ever been in. At level 9, he did 137 damage per shot, and with his 1.5 second hit speed, this came out to a DPS of 91 damage per second, or 153 damage per shot with a DPS of 102 at level 11. For a 6 elixir troop, that is pretty bad. Sure, he did have that range, but he had less health than a normal giant, so it wasn't that hard to deal with him. Especially with cards like Barbarians being so popular, most people had a fantastic counter to this joke of a giant. In fact, in early March, the Royal Giant was one of the only three cards to not be played by even a single top ladder player. Now, leveling is an important factor to consider in 2016. The statistic I'm referring to is only a few days after the card was released, and grand challenges did not exist yet. This means potentially the card could have been slightly useful, but nobody could level it up so quickly to where it could viably compete at the top of ladder. This consideration is debunked by the fact that five other cards were released alongside the Royal Giant, and none of these cards had 0% use rates. In fact, being the only common in this bunch, the Royal Giant was actually the easiest in the group to level up. So all of this really goes to show how truly bad it was at the time. The Royal Giant was the laughing stock of the game, and potentially the worst state a card has ever been in up to this point in the game's history. It was so unusual and rare to see that there was an epic moment in a 2016 Helensky tournament where Clash with Ash pulled out the Royal Giant as a surprise card in his deck, and the audience went nuts just at the sight of this clown being played in the tournament. The rocket, he wants to bring down that barbarian hut. Huh? Doesn't get it fully. Oh, oh, giant in the middle. Here we go. Oh my god, Royal Giant on the way. This was hidden for a while here as Clash with Ash. The most notable thing about this clip was that this match wasn't even played with the Royal Giant in its vanilla state. This was after its first balance change, which would come on March 23rd, 2016, of which it would receive a 20% damage buff. A 20% damage buff is a great buff, but the card was still borderline useless after this, which really just goes to show how terrible this card truly was. This buff did not attract even a single top ladder player to include the Royal Giant, and he was still considered to be the worst card in the game to many players, so another buff was inevitable. On May 3rd, 2016, the Royal Giant would appear in the balance changes once again. This buff was a simple range buff of just half a tile. But first, I need to talk about a common misconception I know people will comment if I don't address. In any set of patch notes from this time, you'll see the Royal Giant actually got a range buff of a full tile, which is technically correct, but misleading. You see, there was a bug in this game up to this point before May where the range was calculated by the distance between the center of a troop's hitbox and its target. But in May, they changed this so attacks would start from the tip of its hitbox rather than the center. With this change going into effect, the Royal Giant essentially lost half a tile of range, but was compensated by an extra full tile of range, so a simple calculation shows that technically the Royal Giant only really gained an additional half tile, because a 5.5 tile range back then is equal to a 6 tile range today. At least, for most cards it is. I'm not even going to get into collision radii because that's not relevant for the Royal Giant. Anyway, how did an additional half tile of range impact the Royal Giant's place in the meta? One big hindrance to the Royal Giant was defensive buildings. The Royal Giant often had a problem of simply walking into the range of buildings of which it would always lose the interaction, so this change made it outrange all defensive non-siege buildings. Meaning these buildings wouldn't even be able to touch the RG unless one of the cards was placed within range, but even then the Royal Giant would always get the first attack on a one-on-one -on -one interaction, since the building would need a second to load in. This range buff was a big deal, and ultimately a huge buff to the card 
card, but considering how terrible the card was before, not being competitively viable for its entire two month life, it seems perfectly justified. Players didn't bat an eye or complain when this balance change was announced because it seems like the card really needed it. It definitely needed something, but having a win condition outrange every defensive building may have been a bit too far, as backed up by the fact that within a couple of days, the Royal Giant went from its stagnant 0% use rate in top ladder to a staggering 28%. Unfortunately, that's the only stat I have from this short era because it wasn't long before the Royal Giant got nerfed. The Royal Giant was certainly no laughingstock anymore. After being mocked for months, he was finally given the respect he never deserved. His range not only allowed him to outrange all defensive buildings, but also connect to the tower two-thirds of a second faster if uninterrupted, which helped it to get more consistent damage. Know that the Royal Giant back then had a much faster first hit attack time and hit speed than it does today, so even if the damage was still fairly low for a 6 elixir card, it could easily get 3 or 4 shots consistently. Even supposed good counters like Barbarians and Mini P.E.K.K.A. weren't effective at stopping him from getting several hits anymore. This was the most popular deck with the big guy at the time. This card was all over the game now, and it quickly got stale for a lot of players. The card was overpowered, and it was not fun to play against. I think the most frustrating thing for most players, though, was when one tower was down and the Royal Giant could be placed in the pocket, because as soon as the opponent placed him, you had exactly one second before he dealt damage to your tower. The calls for nerfs immediately started rolling in, and for weeks they would continue, but there was surprisingly a lot of people saying that the Royal Giant actually was fair to go against and that people were overreacting. That's right, there was a chunk of the community that was content with how he currently was. Despite high use rates and despite the environment where the defender had to put in a superb amount of effort to counter this beast, some players just didn't have a problem with him. Looking back retrospectively, it's pretty clear the Royal Giant needed a nerf. Within just a few weeks of its first May change, it would get another May change before the month was over. This balance change would go on to upset a large number of players on both sides, whether they thought the Royal Giant was fine or not. This nerf would tone the Royal Giant's damage by 4%. Some players were upset because they felt the Royal Giant didn't need a nerf so quickly, but rather needed some more time to settle in and let players get adjusted to dealing with it. Remember, he was seen as an underdog for a very long time, so I can understand where they're coming from. But on the other side, there were those who thought the card was way too overpowered and thought this nerf was far too small, to the point where a lot of players didn't even consider this a nerf. The use rate in top ladder fell to a modest 12% soon after this, which means stat-wise, it was actually pretty balanced now. But we are still so far from the end of this saga. A card being balanced in competitive play is a sign that anybody having exceptional trouble against that card just lacks skill. Although this sentiment is partially true, there was a much bigger problem here that Supercell wasn't prepared for. The Royal Giant was a very unique card in the sense that it was a common rarity win condition. The only other common win condition at the time was Mortar, but that card required very specific decks and a high degree of skill to play well. And it also wasn't that much fun to play. The Royal Giant, on the other hand, was very easy to pick up and very satisfying to play. What makes the fact that it was a common so important was that Clash Royale's 2016 economy made it much easier to level up commons than any other rarity. There was not really a way to control which cards of what rarity you got for epics and legendaries. There were no trade tokens, wild cards, lightning chests, or even epic and legendary chests. And rare cards were sort of in the middle of two in terms of difficulty to level. So, all of this forced a lot of players to prioritize win conditions of a lesser rarity. This is mainly why the Hog Rider was such a popular card in the lower arenas of ladder for so long, and win conditions are the cards that are the best to level up for most decks. If you were free to play, leveling up certain win conditions like Golem or Lava Hound was basically impossible. Hog Rider finally had some competition for a free to play player's choice for a win condition. In fact, according to a player constructed data poll taken soon after the 4% damage nerf, it suggested Royal Giants was being used in about a quarter to 30% of decks in mid ladder, more than double the top ladder usage rate. This disparity is pretty nuts. The same data poll suggests Hog Rider was in about 43% of mid ladder decks, which isn't far from the official top ladder use rate at the time. Royal Giants was clearly in a very different position. The fact that you could level up this card so much easier than any other major win condition prompted free to play players to primarily use this card. Even if it was statistically balanced competitively, that wouldn't matter when the Royal Giant was 2 or 3 levels higher than your opponent's win condition. Most people at the time didn't have a lot of fully maxed cards, so they couldn't really compete fairly against the Royal Giant, 
Remember, even the best defensive buildings like Bomb Tower or Inferno Tower were rare cards along with the Mini P.E.K.K.A., so the best counters to Royal Giant were harder to level up than the Royal Giant itself. It led to a very frustrating environment for the majority of players, and many of these players felt like the game's meta was the worst it ever was. Players began to question why the Royal Giant was even a common in the first place. He certainly seemed like a more significant troop than something basic like Barbarians, Archers, or Goblins, and even the normal Giant was rare, so it seems like it would have made sense to put the Royal Giant in that same same category. I truly believe the Royal Giants was the first card placed in a rarity where it didn't belong. They may have just been trying to give casual players more options when it came to win conditions, which is a nice sentiment on the surface, but they made the drastic mistake of not considering the overleveling aspect of it. It's clear that the Royal Giant was not really the case of a balancing problem, it was an economy problem. It was not an issue in competitive play, and it was an offensive unit, which Supercell liked. So because of all this, Supercell refused to nerf this card any further for the time being, but over the next few months, more and more players continued to level up their Royal Giant, and it was still a menace for lots of mid-ladder players. It seems like the usage rate in mid-ladder was only rising, while in top ladder it was actually falling. No card had really ever had such a massive disparity in general ladder and competitive play before. The more time went on, the more the community cried, begging and pleading Supercell to nerf this unstoppable Goliath. It was now really starting to become a community meme during this time because players couldn't believe Supercell wasn't nerfing this card. Although, a significant number of players were frustrated at those who complained about the Royal Giant, because the complainers weren't analyzing the competitive stats and recognizing the economy problems that led to the Royal Giant becoming so popular, they were constantly seeing this guy and losing to him and were sick of it and I was one of those people. This man was truly the Mega Knight of 2016. While I do believe Supercell should primarily balance the game around competitive stats, I think mid ladder does need to be taken into consideration a little bit. At the end of the day, Supercell is trying to make a fun game that appeals to the most amount of players. The memes just kept on coming, and regardless of what you thought about the Royal Giant at the time, you couldn't deny a huge portion of players were not happy about it. So on August 24th, 2016, Supercell would succumb to the pressure and nerf the Royal Giant. It seems like Supercell had switched their mindset and had no desire of keeping the card even a little viable at this point. The card had almost no usage in top ladder, but they certainly weren't going to buff it. If you were not going to make the card competitively viable, what was the point of keeping it game-breaking in mid-ladder? Supercell would go on to nerf the Royal Giant's hit speed by 0.2 seconds, as well as nerfing its first hit attack time by 0.2 seconds. It shot a lot slower now, so it wasn't as easy to get so many shots. This was a pretty harsh nerf that certainly made the card a lot weaker. After this nerf, the card went from having the occasional appearance in top ladder to being completely useless. However, it hardly made a dent in the card's mid-ladder popularity. The card was in perhaps the trickiest position a card has ever been in up to this point. How could a card that seemed almost useless in competitive play be one of the most fearsome, troublesome cards in casual play? Supercell seemed stuck on what the next move here should have been. But before it could even get another balance change, the meta started to shift. Around October 2016, you started to see the Royal Giant trickle back into the competitive scene, and by November, he was appearing in one of the top-rated decks. It's hard to say exactly what prompted Royal Giant's usage again, but I can say one big thing that definitely seemed to help the Royal Giant was a buff to the Lightning in September 2016, where each strike was given a 0.5 second stun ability just like Zap. Being able to stun or even reset defenses allowed the Royal Giant to break through defenses way more easily. From this point on, if you ever did see the big fella in competitive play, you were practically guaranteed to see the lightning with it. By December, the Royal Giant had a 15% use rate in top ladder, and this deck surrounding him was the second most popular deck in top ladder. This deck, or something very similar to it, is really the only thing you'd see Royal Giant in. You needed a specific deck to utilize him, but boy was he strong in that deck. Again though, a 13% use rate is not a game-breaking stat, so it's not like he was dominating the competitive scene, but of course, mid-ladder players were still not happy. So many people had still been crying for Royal Giant nerfs for months and months. It seemed like they would never be happy. They weren't getting adjusted to the Royal Giant. But it got three total nerfs already, and the disparity of mid-ladder usage and competitive usage was still drastic. The card continued to be very controversial. Those who complained about it were mocked for their lack of skill, but nevertheless would keep going. Many people suggested simply changing the Royal Giant's rarity from common to rare, but changing a card's rarity is something that's never happened, and nobody's really sure how that would even work. It's never been done to this day, so it likely will never happen. However, Supercell would make another giant mistake in December that would make the Royal Giant even more of a nightmare.
What do elite barbarians have to do with the royal giant, you may wonder? Well, they're more similar than you think. They're both 6 elixir, both commons, and both have incredibly frustrating mechanics. Supercell made the same mistake of making a troop with a rare attribute into a common card. It was technically released in November, but wasn't viable until December when they buffed it. It was a pretty big buff, and thus elite barbarians were swarming the game in December. They were high damage dealers and a great counter to the Royal Giant, so his use rate plummeted. However, for mid ladder players, the Elite Barbarians didn't replace the Royal Giant, they joined the Royal Giant. Since it was so easy to level up both of these cards and they had such a high casual appeal, they became an almost inseparable combo in mid ladder. The cards didn't even really synergize well, it was just two cards that were easy to play and easy to level up. Even if the Elite Barbarians were everywhere, mid ladder players would not stop playing their Royal Giant. The disparity was worse than ever thanks to this troublesome duo, and now Supercell had another card that was going to be in the exact same position as the RG. Elite Barbarians were generally overpowered, so a nerf was inevitable, but that wasn't going to stop mid ladder players. This nerf would come at the end of January, and it would cause the Elite Barbarians' use rate to plummet in top ladder. Thanks to this, the Royal Giant did make a small comeback, but although things were close to being balanced for competitive players, Supercell left a mid ladder mess. Royal Giant and Elite Barbarians were not going anywhere for most players. They continued to terrorize ladder, making the environment significantly worse from when the Royal Giant alone was viable. Months would go by into 2017 with no more attention to either the Elite Barbarians or Royal Giant, and players' frustrations only kept growing. On any Clash Royale post, even when not related to the Elite Barbarians or Royal Giant at all, players would be pleading for nerves. I gotta say, early 2017 was probably the worst time to be a mid ladder player. Eventually, Supercell had to give in again to please the player base over having a balanced game. So in April 2017, both Elite Barbarians and Royal Giant would get a nerf. The Royal Giant nerf was nerfing its deploy time from the standard 1 second to 2 seconds. This would give the defender more time to react to the Royal Giant, which seems like the right direction to go in. But this nerf was so weird because Supercell rarely ever used deploy time to balance cards, and very few cards had greater than a 1 second deploy time. In fact, before this, the Golem was the only troop to have a deploy time greater than 1 second. It was definitely an interesting move though, and players were happy to get this if nothing else. A lot of players still weren't satisfied, but at least Supercell was acknowledging the frustration. This nerf was pretty devastating though, as shown by his use rate in top ladder plummeting and remaining at 0% shortly after the balance changes went live. As the next few months went by, the Royal Giant's use rate was beginning to even trickle down in certain parts of mid ladder. The card was pretty bad at this point, but there were still players very upset with the Royal Giant regardless. Well over a year would go by, and he would become more and more irrelevant with each passing month, with Supercell showing no sign on changing him. Even a lot of mid ladder players were giving up on the card at this point. The rates for him by mid-2018 were just abysmal in pretty much every part of the game. This is where the Elite Barbarians and Royal Giant did differ a bit, as the Elite Barbarians were continuing to be widely seen in a wider range of trophies, and in fact they were the most upgraded troop besides Zap according to user data in Clash Royale. Their appeal remained strong, as the Royal Giant just sort of fell off. Seth, who was the head of balancing, stated in an interview in September 2018 that Royal Giant would be getting a rework soon. And according to his word, the only area of ladder Royal Giant even had an average use rate was between 4,000 and 4,500 trophies, which at the time was right at the beginning of Legendary Arena. And when this card was seen, it was always overleveled, meaning at equal level he was statistically useless. A rework though was going to be controversial no matter what. It may have been well over a year at this point since the Royal Giant received any balance change, but players hadn't forgotten the pain inflicted by this troublesome Goliath. On September 28th, 2018, one of the most historically impactful videos would be uploaded to the Clash Royale YouTube channel. Knowing the Royal Giant rework was going to be controversial, the team decided to devote an entire video specifically to talking about this one rework. Seth basically explained everything I already did, and talked about the goals for this card. The thing that shocked players about this rework was that they would be increasing the Royal Giant's damage by a whopping 60%. To compensate though, they would be decreasing his range from 6.5 tiles to 5 tiles, making him now unable to outrange defense.
defensive buildings. A 60% damage buff is a huge buff, but a 1.5 tile range decrease is a huge nerf, so players were unsure of how this rework would actually fare out. Many players began to panic and mock Supercell thinking they had gone crazy. Some players to this day still remember this announcement as sort of the Harambe of Clash Royale, basically the moment in history where everything went wrong. I've been seeing it recently to comment on the downward spiral of this game, blaming this one event for all the game's modern problems. Obviously, I think that's an exaggeration, but it really just goes to show how memorable this one balance change was, that players are still thinking about it years later. I also really love how on this video, the official Clash Royale YouTube channel basically encouraged people to harass Drew on Twitter over this. Also, it wasn't mentioned in this video, but the deploy time of the Royal Giants would also be reverted back to one second. Players anxiously waited for this change to go live, bracing for a potential Royal Giant dominated meta. It almost felt like it was going to be a completely different card. Tensions were certainly high, but Supercell had been working on this rework for a very long time. I feel like they put more time and effort into this balance change than any other time in the game's history. They didn't want this card to be too strong because it would cause a miserable meta, but they didn't want this card to be too weak either because they clearly worked hard on this rework and likely didn't want to have to buff him. It was so important to get this rework right in one go. Finally, on October 1st, 2018, the change would go live. And to many players' surprise, the card was perfectly balanced. I'm not exaggerating, it really was perfect. It didn't just get the Royal Giant balanced statistically though, it solved the problem of having to deal with overleveled Royal Giants in low areas of ladder. With the shorter range, it took a lot more skill now to get value out of the Royal Giant, so it lost a lot of its appeal for mid-ladder players. Besides, they had moved on to a different guy. And even the fact that this card was a common didn't matter as much anymore because just before this rework, the game had added trade tokens, which was great for helping players level up cards of any rarity, so now free-to-play players had more opportunity to level up other win conditions. I really have to applaud the devs for how they handled this situation. It seems like they had solved all the problems with the Royal Giant. Now he could finally just be a viable, healthy win condition. You would often see him in the decks you were seeing him in years ago, basically always being paired with Furnace and Lightning. But the Barbarian Barrel, which was a relatively new card, also saw great success with him. What's interesting though is that his rates never really stayed consistent. Like towards the end of 2018, his rates dropped pretty low thanks to a heavy Ram Rider and 3 Musketeer meta. And in 2019, he wasn't performing well in the heavy P.E.K.K.A. or Elixir Golem metas. But even if his rates would occasionally drop here and there, they always bounced back. And I don't think it was fair to call the Royal Giant a dead card by any stretch during this period. About midway through 2020 though, the Royal Giants rates would remain consistently good. One major factor here was the Fisherman. The Fisherman was added to the game in July 2019, but in July 2020, it got some big buffs, and thus you saw him a lot more often with the Royal Giant. The Fisherman was really useful for pulling things away from the Royal Giant, most notably single units like P.E.K.K.A. and Mini P.E.K.K.A. The synergy was so naturalistic that from this point on, the Fisherman was a staple in the Royal Giant archetype. You were also beginning to see the Royal Giant paired with the Giant Skeleton a lot more. The Giant Skeleton was really good at clearing the pathway. It was an expensive combo, but trying to stop both of these Giants together was a very difficult feat. I don't think anyone was expecting this synergy, but towards the end of 2020, you would almost always see them together. The Royal Giant archetype was just evolving a lot through 2020 to the point where even Lightning was no longer needed with him. Now you could use things like Earthquake or Barbarian Barrel to take care of Inferno Towers. The Giant Skeleton was unfortunately butchered in the first set of balance changes in 2021, but nevertheless, the Royal Giant archetype stood strong. At the same time as the Giant Skeleton's departure from the meta though, Elite Barbarians were raised from the dead by being given a generous hit speed buff. Unfortunately for the Royal Giant, Elite Barbarians were back to terrorize the competitive scene for the first time in nearly five years. Although it certainly wasn't as bad as the first time, Elite Barbarians were still a naturally good counter to the card, so the use rate trickled down during this period. But this time, for the first time in Clash Royale history, a Royal Giant Elite Barbarian deck reached the top deck list. Yes, this was a competitively viable Elite Barbarian Royal Giant deck. Now, this wasn't the most popular Elite Barbarian deck, but I just think it's really crazy because back in the days of early 2017, complainers about the Royal Giant Elite Barbarian decks were always lectured about how those decks weren't competitively viable and mid-ladder garbage. But you know what they say, one 2017 player's mid-ladder garbage is another player's 2021 12-win Grand Challenge deck. 
In all seriousness though, Elite Barbarians were in just about everything, so I don't think it's as surprising to see the two together than it was to see the Royal Giant viable in the first place. But thanks to the Fishermen, at least one of the defending Elite Barbarians could be pulled away, cutting their DPS in half. I also can't forget to mention the Mother Witch, which was also buffed, making it a good support unit to the Royal Giant during this time as well. With eventual nerfs to the Elite Barbarians, the rates of the Royal Giant steadily rose back up to an 8-9% usage rate with a decently high win rate. It was still one of the strongest win conditions. It had been pretty solid since that 2018 rework, but to some players it was beginning to feel like Royal Giant was perhaps a little too strong. With newer cards like Fisherman, Electro Spirit, and Mother Witch being such great support units, he was arguably stronger than he was when the rework initially happened. It had been nearly three years since that rework by this point and hadn't needed any balance changes, which really goes to show how successful that rework was. Ultimately, it probably was the most successful rework in Clash Royale history. But by now, the card was doing so well competitively, Supercell ultimately decided it was time to nerf the Royal Giant again. In September 2021, the Royal Giant would get the last balance change it's ever gotten to this day. This was a simple first hit attack time nerf of 0.2 seconds. This nerf was fairly small, but I think that was the appropriate approach for this situation. A first hit attack time nerf doesn't matter as much to the Royal Giant anyway, because it's not a troop that's usually moving around and constantly locking onto different things. All this really meant was that the Royal Giant would now sometimes not get one shot it would have gotten otherwise. But like with most nerfs, it came with a subsequent fall in rates. But it still wasn't bad at all, and I think this nerf fine-tuned this brutal tank into the perfect spot. And apparently Supercell thinks so too, because it's been over two years since this balance change, and it's been pretty alright. The rates actually steadily rose back up through 2022, and Royal Giant continued to be one of the best win conditions. A big part of the rise in 2022 was due to the Giant Skeleton making a pretty big comeback, and a new card, the Phoenix, would be released in October, and that card would go on to be a solid staple in most Royal Giant decks. The Phoenix was really strong for about 8 months after its release, so the Royal Giant was able to benefit from this power for a long time. Royal Giant was just able to adapt so well. Some pro players were even complaining as recent as this year that Supercell didn't nerf the Royal Giant enough and that they should have gone further. The logical step here may have been to give him a slight nerf, but Supercell would do something completely different that would mark the next major step for the Royal Giant's journey. This is something I haven't really talked about in depth before. Evolutions Evolutions were a brand new feature that could be used to give an already existing card a stat boost as well as an additional special ability. This update came out in June 2023, and only four cards would actually get an evolution on launch, and one of those cards was the Royal Giant. There was lots of preview gameplay of this evolved troop, and players were absolutely shocked when they first saw it. The evolved Royal Giant's ability was that it would deal recoil damage every time it fired its cannon. Anything within a quarter of a tile radius from the Royal Giant's hitbox would be dealt 81 damage at tournament standard. For perspective, 81 is the exact amount of hit points skeletons have, so it would wipe those out in one shot. But in addition to dealing damage, the evolved Royal Giant would deal 1.5 tiles of knockback to troops within the radius, meaning troops like Mini P.E.K.K.A. and Barbarians couldn't even touch him after he started firing. His projectiles would also deal splash damage, which wasn't a very big deal because he could only target buildings and the splash radius was very small, but it was just unnecessary regardless. And finally, if all of that wasn't enough, he would also have 30% more health than the normal Royal Giant. To play an evolved card, you had to cycle the normal version of that troop a certain number of times, and in the Royal Giant's case, you only had to cycle it once. However, before he was officially released, his knockback range was reduced from 1.5 tiles to 1 tile, so more ground troops like Mini P.E.K.K.A. could actually hit him. Believe it or not, when the evolved Royal Giant was released, he was pretty strong. Remember, there was no disadvantage when it came to playing the Evolved Royal Giant. It was the same elixir cost to play, and had either equal or buffer stats than the original troop. For the first time in years, a long-term, perfectly balanced card was seeing a copious amount of usage. I wouldn't even say the Royal Giant at the time was the best evolution, because if you remember, the Evolved Firecracker was one of the most overpowered troops to ever step foot into the arena. But with so few evolutions to compete with, and the fact that it was the only win condition with an evolution, the Royal Giant certainly had its place. I mean, if you had even shown footage like this to a 2016 player and told them that this would be Clash Royale in 7 years, they probably probably would have had a heart attack on the spot. Evolutions, though, didn't really spark a new way to play the Royal Giant. It simply continued to be played in already existing good Royal Giant decks. 
11 days after the release of Evolutions, an emergency maintenance break would come to tweak Evolutions, and one Evolution being affected was the Royal Giant. This balance change specifically only affected the Royal Giant in his evolved form. His health would go from plus 30% to the original troop's health to only 20%, and his splash damage would be completely removed. But a couple months later, in August 2023, this health bonus would be reduced further to 10%. And that's the last change it has ever received to this day. So how is the Royal Giant doing today? There's different stats according to whether or not you include the evolved form. The standard Royal Giant with no evolution has fallen to the lowest it's been in years. But even with the evolution, it's actually underperforming. Part of this is thanks to the strength of the evolved barbarians keeping it in check. But just as more evolutions got released, and with the nerfs it's already gotten, and just as the overall meta shifted, it just led to the Royal Giant falling off substantially. I still think he can be a very good card though. I don't think bad stats indicate he needs a buff right now. I think the main problem right now is just other evolutions, especially Evolved Barbarians. I still think the whole Evolutions feature still needs some work as a whole. If you take Evolutions out of the equation, the Royal Giant is still one of the best win conditions to this day. He may not be the influence he once was, both in competitive gameplay or casual, but its legacy will be remembered by many players forever. One funny easter egg to remember this legacy in-game is the fact that Nerf the Royal Giant is actually a text option to your 2v2 partner, which shows how aware Supercell was of the amount of times they heard that phrase. If you're a 2016 or 2017 player who hasn't been active for a while and was always baffled on why Supercell was so hesitant on nerfing the Royal Giant, I hope this video taught you something. Thank you everybody for listening, and have a good one.